Hi, my name is Pastor Jack Hughes of Anchor Bible Church in Louisville, Kentucky. And in this short video, I just want to show you a couple little cool things that uh, somebody asked me about in Logos Bible software. And so let's go over to Logos and we'll talk about this. I want to talk about these little note files and how to integrate your personal notes so they match up kind of everywhere in your library that you want them to be. And so if you write a note or have an idea or an exegetical thought or whatever, you can make it appear and attach it to any verse in any resource so that it really integrates your thoughts, your illustrations, quotes, things like that. I want to show you that. And then I also want to show you just a little bit how to do that in the, the sphere of word studies. So these are just kind of ways you can integrate your thoughts and your kind of synthesized um, conclusions uh, illustrations, uh, things like that, as you're using Lagos Bible software, so it's a lot more helpful. So first of all, let's just look at this text right here. You can see I'm in 2 Timothy 4, <clears throat> and I have all these like little symbols here. What are, what are these? This tells me I have created a custom note to attach to a specific verse. So, for instance, and we're just going to look at some of these now. If I click on this, notice it says, not pleasing men. In, in, uh, it is in the presence of God that we preach. I solemnly prize in the presence of God. I just made a little quote there, and then uh, I typed in 2 Corinthians 2.17. I, I don't even know what this is. That's kind of, let's just remove that. I'm spelling error. I kind of am hyperactive. Um, for we are not like many peddling the word of God, but as from sincerity, but as from God, we speak in Christ in the sight of God. So this is just a note, I just, just an idea. So anytime I want one of these to appear, and I'm going to make one right now for verse one, I'm going to right click. And you need to make sure that whenever you right click, you have these two panes that show up. The left side of the pane tells you what you're going to select. The right side of the pane tells you the actions you can perform based on what you selected in the left side. So what I want is I want the reference. Click. Notice how the options change when I, slid, I switched from the lima here to the verse reference here. The options of what I can do change. So once I collect a verse reference, or I could even just select notice a word solemnly or whatever, you can attach a note to anything you want. Um, I mostly use the verse reference and the lima. Those are the two I use the most. And if you come over here, I have these options now. And let's say I want to do a Jack's custom note to 2 Timothy. So let's do it. Over here is my note page. You notice 2 Timothy 4.1 tells me is what's happening. And um, I can write whatever I want. So I can say, this is my favorite verse. Okay, so I have put that in there. And now um, notice this symbol right here. If I go up to the upper left corner right here, and I click on that little arrow, it gives me these symbol choices and these colors. So if I'm just making a general comment or something, I just put like a square and say I do blue. There you go. Notice it's a square in blue here. I'm telling it what I want this particular note to look at. And I kind of have ways I do things. Notice this kind of real important things or a little purple dot or blue dot or whatever. Um, that's how you attach a note. Now, this is what's cool about it. In every single resource that mentions 2 Timothy 4.1, or a range of verses that includes 2 Timothy 4.1, I am going to see this file. 
This is my favorite verse. If I put my arrow over it, it just tells me what it says. This is my favorite verse, okay? So that's pretty cool. Now let me just show you how that works. Notice these, I'm just gonna delete this one here that I just made. Delete this note, and now it's gone. Um, notice these here. Now, I don't remember all that I did here, but let's just, let's click on these and see what I've got. Um, let me open this up. Here is something from Charles Spurgeon. A prophet's courage is needed still by preachers of the word of God. Oh, may we be able to say with Wesley, my life, my blood, I here present. If for thy truth they may be spent, fulfill thy sovereign counsel, Lord, thy will be done, thy name adored. Give me thy strength, O God of power, then let wind blow or thunders roar. Thy faithful witness will I be. Tis fixed, I can do all for thee. There you go. So there's the reference, there's everything. I like this. Notice how I click on it and it opens this up. But, 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 but what's going on here? What are all these verses right here? Well, I have anchored this note to all these texts so that anywhere in any of my thousands of Logos books, if this verse, verse 2, comes up, this symbol will be next to it, and I'll be able to see what it says. There it is. It, it allows me to create my own cross-references. Here they are. Mark 3.14, Acts 8.4, whatever. So I can click on these and see similar verses. He ordered us to preach. How would they preach unless they were sent? You see, all these kind of have a preaching theme. For God did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So what I did is I went and I found a bunch of verses that talk about preaching, and I attached this same cool quote to all the verses. So if I run into any of those verses in any resource at any time, I will see this symbol. Now, if I want to change that symbol, I could say, yeah, since I did a lot of cross-references, um, anchored in a lot of text, I'm going to do arrows that back and forth. I'm going to do it red, okay? Now, it's red, it's arrows. See how I changed it? But anyways, what this allows me to do is I can have a good quote, in this case, a little poem from Spurgeon, and I can attach it to all these other verses. But you might think, well, then, but how... How do you know what verses to attach it to? Well, you might just have some in your head that you're thinking about. You know, you have a verse on the deity of Christ and John 1.1. 1, 1, you got some good quote by some famous whatever about the word becoming flesh. And then you think, you know what? There's that other verse in John chapter 10. You know, I'm the father of one. My sheep hear my voice, you know, and, and I'm the father of one. It's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to go in there and just, you can just type in the anchor. You can click add anchor. So if this was it, I click Add Anchor, and notice I can just type in the reference right here, John 10, what is it, 30 or something like that. You click on here and do Done. Now, if I were to go to John 10, 30, it'd still have this, this arrows, red arrows going back and forth. But if I don't want that, because it doesn't relate to preaching, I just hit the negative, it's gone. So it allows me to integrate my thoughts and good quotes. Let's click on some of these other ones, see what they are. I don't know. Let's get this over here. Uh, be ready to preach. C, this is Robert Morgan on this day, May 13th, the boy preacher. This is a great illustration. Robert Morgan has a daily devotional, kind of historical, kind of like uh, five minutes in church history, if you know about that. Um, kind of the same thing on this day, just gives you a little one page synopsis of something happened that day in history. This is about the boy preacher. I can go to that resource and find out what it is. Uh, let's click on this. Um, here. I used this on his preaching at Grace Bible Church in Hutchinson, Kansas in 2014. 
We shall never see any change until we have some men in our ranks who are willing to be martyrs. That deep ditch can never be crossed till the bodies of a few of us fill it up. And after that, it will be easy work to preach the gospel there. Our brethren should go there uh, once more. They can leave their white cravats at home and white feathers too and go forth with a brave heart and a bold spirit. And if the people mock and scoff, let them mock and scoff, etc. It's a cool quote. And again, this right here allows you, these little filters here allow you to do a little bit of editing. So if I wanted to, I could highlight all this right here and then I could remove the bold so it's not bold. And there you go. Okay, just a cool quote from Spurgey. Let's see what else we found. Word of God that's hidden a thousand books. Had they never uh, you be put forth against their abominable doings and whatever. You just, you anchor something from William Tyndale's preface to his translation in the New Testament. Anyways, it's kind of cool. It's a super cool quote. And notice how I just attach those because it has to relate with relates to preaching. I can put as many of these as I want on any verse I want, on any word I want. You can attach a note file. And once you get it attached, then you can go to similar verses like this, 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 and you can attach or anchor another verse so they're interrelated and when you click on any of those verses or see any of those verses that appear either by themselves or in a verse range in any resource let me just show you here's uh here's the passage guide these are all different commentaries on you know second timothy 4 2 uh, let's just click macarthur let me just open this up so in a floating window so you can see it let me make the text a little bigger there you go. Notice how all these symbols are the same symbols that appear here. Why? Because this is 2 Timothy 4 2, right? And this is 2 Timothy 4 2. All the symbols still appear. So wherever you create a symbol, it shows up in every resource that has that same verse or verse range. It'll be there and integrate your thoughts so you can find them on key verses. But where do you find key verses? Let's say you have a really cool quote and it's on some really cool subject, but you don't know your Bible that well. And so it's like, where do I find cool cross references? Let me show you. This resource right here, the New Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, is... There's an old treasure of scripture knowledge, and then somebody did the new treasure of scripture knowledge and added way, way more cross references. So let me just open this in a uh, floating window for a second. Let me just amp this up so you can see it better. There you go. So here's the text, Matthew 24. But what we want is we want 2 Timothy 4 2. There it is. All these cross-references relate to, notice the symbols still appear because it's a resource that has that verse range in it. The, once you create a note, it shows up everywhere. It's really great. So right now, I can then look at these verses to see if they are verses I would like to anchor to one of these notes. In this case, this one with the heart on it, that's the one I've got open over here, the Tyndale quote. So I can hover my, air, my, my pointer, the little hand pointer, when it, when it goes over a verse reference, it just automatically pops up. I proclaimed glad tidings, righteousness, and the congregation, behold, I will not strain my lips. Oh, that's not good. Um, and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire and give you strength. Mm, mm, mm. I can just go through here. Jonah 3, 2, arise, go to Nineveh, and proclaim. I like that one, okay? So, I'm going to now dock this tab so you can see something here. Dock the tab back to where it was. Um, uh, it should be over here. Let me drag it back over here. Sorry about that. Ooh. Sorry, sorry. I shrunk it down. There it is. There we go. Okay, so now I have this tab. Let me get it when I 
and it kind of messed up my formatting. So here's here it is here, and the we have Jonah chapter three verse two is what we want to do. So if I click on that word, it automatically opens whatever active Bible I have opened. In this case, it's the NASB um, ninety five. So notice it opened to Jonah 3, 2, because I clicked on that. Now, if I clicked on Psalm 49, 40 verse 9, there it is. But I'm going to go back to Jonah 3, 2. See that? There you go. Now, because this verse reference is at the top of that, because I clicked on Jonah 3, 2, if I go over here to anchor, where it says add anchor in my note, notice how Jonah 3, 2 exists there as the active reference because this is the active it's highlighted not this one but this one um, I can now just do done notice Jonah 3 2 now appears in my anchored texts so if I were to go here and look at Luke 14 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he appointed me to preach the gospel. And I go, I like that one too, and I want to anchor that to my cool William Tyndale quote. I click on it. Do you see that? Notice there's no red arrow. There's a different one for something else. So if I want to anchor that, since it's at the top, since it's in the reference field here, since it's in the active window, if I go to add anchor, see it, how it appears right here? 418, 418, and I just go, done. There's the verse reference. It's, it tells me it's attached. Notice the heart appears. Now, in any place in my library that has that reference or a range of verses that includes that reference, that heart's going to appear. I can click on it, get the cool William Tyndale quote. So all I do is I go through the treasure of Scripture knowledge, and I click on whatever verses, how they preach unless they were sent. And if I want to attach to that, then I can just do it. I can just click on it and it's super fast. Done. Notice how the heart now appears right there. And if I put my arrow on it, it shows me part of the quote. That's pretty cool. You can also, if you have a verse reference or whatever, you can also click add anchor and just type it in. You know, you could just type in some, you know, Acts 4.12. Click. Done. There it is. Now, that doesn't relate really to preaching, but um, there you go. So all these verses now that relate to preaching all have the cool William Tyndale quote. It helps you integrate. So here's some things that you can do. When you're doing research in a commentary in whatever, you find a cool quote. Get it. Copy it. Go to the verse that you want. If it's Romans 10, 15, let's do Romans 10, 16. Create a custom note. There it is. This is the verse. You type in, you paste in whatever it is. Let me just take something over here from MacArthur. Let's do Calvin. Okay, Calvin. Let's just copy some Calvin. Copy. There you go. Let me paste it in there. Uh, paste. There it is. Notice it gives you the John Calvin. It gives you the footnotes and everything on there. So I, I have B, B instant in a season. I like this. Then I want to create some Notes, I want to anchor it. Notice, since the text that's already highlighted is already in there, it doesn't say anything. But if I were to do 2 Timothy 4, up oh, 4, 2, attach. Now, this quote from Calvin is going to appear in 2 Timothy 4, 2. And what symbol is it going to have? Whatever one I want. I can come up here and make a star. I can make it blue. I got a little blue star there. That blue star, notice it appears over here in Calvin's resource. It appears in every resource that has either of these two verses. I can anchor it to as many verses I want and find it very easily. 
If I can't find verses, I go to a good cross-reference resource like this, and I click on whatever I want, Jonah 3.2, add anchor, you know, you just whatever you want. You can, notice Jonah 3.4, active reference right here. You can say, okay, I want to do it in Jonah 3.2. There it is. I just do done, done. There are Jonah 3.2. So now Jonah 3.2 has the little blue star. See how it integrates everything? This is how you keep your thoughts organized and you can put them in there. Sometimes I'll read a book on Kindle, like if I'm flying on an airplane, I might do use my Kindle app, I read a Kindle book, I mark it up. Whenever you go to Kindle, then you can call up on your, your main computer, you can call up your Kindle books. You can select the book you want. You can select highlights. It'll show you everything you highlighted in the book. You can copy and paste it into a, all the key verses you want and cross-reference it. Anytime you find something on the internet that's really amazing, a science story, a good illustration of something, you think, this reminds me of such and such a verse. Go to that verse. Right-click. Paste it into the custom note. Then go down and you can fiddle um, around and use Treasury of Scripture knowledge and find other similar verses, and you can attach it so they're all integrated and it shows up wherever it is in your library. So you can get on logos.com and you can find out. Also, uh, John Fallahy's learnlogos.com is the best place, I think, if you want to get training for Logos. And you can go there and just get your intel, get your information and find out you know, how to use notes so that they go all across the platform. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing that's kind of fun. And again, I'm just gonna go back here to 2 Timothy 4. All right, let's say <clears throat> you want to um, do a word study of this word preach, okay? Let me close this out here. This word preach right here. You do a right click and you want to select the Lima. That's right here. You can have the, what's in the manuscript, but of course that's inflected and it may not be kind of the word you find in all your theological dictionaries and word books. The Lima is kind of the root word that everybody uses for the, their word study books and stuff like that. So you want to collect, select Lima. Usually you can also do the root word, but that doesn't always work either. So this right here is best. K. Russo is the Lima. Then you do word study. Now I'm going to open this up and I want to show you something. Okay. So this right here shows you a whole bunch of fun stuff. Notice here's the word K. Russo. And if I want to see every occurrence of this word, if I click on the blue ring, it shows me how that word is translated preach or preached in all these texts here. If I want to see proclaim, I click here. This is all the places translated proclaim. This is done doing what is called an Englishman's concordance search. It's showing you all the different ways a certain word is, is produced. Anyways, you can click on these different parts of the ring and it'll show you wherever it's a preacher and that one verse or made proclaim in one verse, and there you have it, okay? This right here, your different theological dictionaries, your word resources, I have kind of mine started out with enhanced strong Lexus it's like the, you know, just the very basic, then Vines, then Bauer, Gingrich, and Danker, you know, and then you can kind of go through it, the abridged theological dictionary, the New Testament, La Anita, you can kind of go down here until you're, you get the idea. But as you go through these resources here, sometimes, I don't know about you, but when you do a word study, sometimes you want to kind of synthesize your own thoughts on that particular word. You want, you want, to, you want, it to, you want to preserve, okay, I just looked at five or six lexicons to find out the meaning of a word, and you can put it into your sermon and say, this word in this context means X, Y, or Z. And you can just do that in your sermon notes, but you can also 
copy from your sermon notes or just go down here. Notice, and I'm in the word study, Lima. These are all my lexicons and dictionaries. If I go down here and I do add note, I can put in, this is the, uh, these are my conclusions to my word study on K. Russo, you know, blah, 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 blah. I put it all in there. I put whatever I'm thinking in there, and then I can copy this into my sermon, or I can do everything in my sermon and copy the intel here. Notice it has a little symbol here. I can click on this. It says open in notes, delete this note. But this symbol right here, once I create my own definition or synthesized research thoughts in this area. Any other time in the future when I click on the word Caruso and do a word study of it in any text, my notes and synthesized thoughts of what that means in a specific context or whatever is going to show up so that I always have it. So instead of just doing it in your sermon notes and then three years later doing it again in your sermon notes and three years later doing it again in your sermon notes, just put it in there and you'll look down and go, hey, I did this before. Oh, that's good. Because you'll agree with what you did because you did it. Anyways, that's a little way that you can also integrate Logos and information that's custom to you and to make it show up um, later when you may have forgotten what you did. So you can either attach it in your, in your word study, create a note, put whatever you want. You can, even, you can even do this. Let me just show you. Let's say I'm going to do um, a few of these resources. And let's just say I like this right here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paste it into my notes. See that? And let's just say I am um, going here and I'm going to do a theological dictionary. There it is. And I say, oh, I like this. Copy. And then I come down here and I what? I paste it into my notes. Do you see? I can paste it in. I can copy it in. I don't even need to write. Just steal anything you want from any of the resources. It even gives you the footnotes of where it all came from. You can make your own thing. You can paste things in there. Then any other time you look up K. Russo, this note symbol will appear and you will be able to then you can open it in notes or not, but I just leave it here. It'll always show up at the bottom of the screen as your own custom note for that particular word and your own synthesized conclusions of what it means. I usually like to look at the context, so I'll put, you know, in this context, this word means X, Y, and Z, and I'll paste in some stuff or type in some stuff and kind of have my own thoughts on it. So there you have it note files, both in the Google text. You can do it in any other resource. You can do it um, in word studies, and that then will appear in any other place, either the verse reference or, in this case, the Greek word shows up. So you can get to your conclusions, your good information, your illustrations that you found. Hope that helps, and uh, until then, stay in the Word. DrivenNails.com is a user-supported ministry.